Putting together all the elements to make a true hunting simulation game can be a bit difficult, but the hunter Call of the Wild is trying to do just that. But this is a hunt that's worth taking on, or should this call go unanswered? The Hunter Call of the Wild is easily the best hunting simulation game that's available on modern systems. However, this is a game that's far from being for everyone. It takes a lot of patience and time to not only get used to the game, but even being able to hunt down the animals that you're trying to track. The game features two different regions that you'll be able to travel and explore through, and you can switch between them at any point. They are quite vast, and for the most part, the visuals are absolutely beautiful to look at. The game actually features a vast single player experience that features a very sandbox-esque mission-based mode where you'll have main objectives and side ones for the various characters that you'll get a chance to talk to. Some will involve things like just taking pictures of tracks or bears or hunting certain types of animals during certain times of the day or just exploring and being able to find certain locations. But the cool thing is you're able to hunt at your leisure. You can just turn off the mission mode if you want to in the options menu and just go around exploring and hunting whatever animals you want to. When it comes to the hunting, there's a decent amount going on. You'll find tracks all over the place and the tracks will kind of give you a general idea of where an animal was going. It's then up to you to find the next set of tracks and the next and so on and so forth till eventually you come to the animal. The thing is though, it may take a few minutes or it may take an hour or more if you are having just bad luck or the animal was a long way from where you initially found those tracks. There's also things like scent going on. You can have to pay attention to the wind to make sure that the animal doesn't pick up on your scent. And of course, sound. You really have to move slow and make sure you're paying attention to how loud you're moving or the animal's gonna get spooked and run off and it's gonna make the trek of trying to find them much longer. When you finally get that opportunity to take your shot though, you also have to factor in wind. And when you do hit the animal, it's usually gonna run off and you're gonna have to track the blood until eventually you do find the animal. When it comes to hitting the right spot on the animal, it's a bit hit or miss with the game. In fact, you can shoot one of the animals point blank in the head and it won't drop. In fact, it'll still end up running off and you'll have to track it, which is one of the few gripes I have with the game. In order to complete your hunts, there is a decent amount of weaponry that you'll be able to use and more weapons that you'll be able to buy and unlock as the game progresses. For completing missions, hunting animals, or just exploring various areas of the map, you'll gain experience and money. The experience can then be put in a variety of different skills for your guns as well as just generic ones for your character. And money, of course, will be spent to buy more ammunition as well as other supplies like lures and other guns. A lot of the stuff in the game is locked from the start, so it'll take you a pretty good amount of time before you have everything unlocked in the game. And this includes a lot of the lures, which actually do work. You're able to use them, and as long as you're patient, animals will start to come your way. While exploring around the map, you'll have a certain amount of stuff that's already kind of placed on your map for you to locate, but a lot of stuff won't end up popping up until you get close, unless you find one of the towers. And very much like an Ubisoft game like Assassin's Creed, you can climb these towers in order to get a good vantage point and see all of the stuff that's in the general area of where that tower is. The game also features stuff like camping equipment, there's some hunting shacks, as well as ATVs that you're able to use and ride around. And thankfully you have these because there's a lot of distance you have to cover, especially during the mission, so the ATV really comes in handy there. From the technical side of things, the game didn't crash on me, but I did notice a few glitches here and there, including animals kind of getting stuck, and a few weird oddities here and there, as well as the game did slow up from time to time. The Hunter Call of the Wild is available now on the PlayStation 4 for $39.99. It does have a platinum trophy. The game is also available on Xbox One and PC. Overall, The Hunter Call of the Wild is for hunting simulation enthusiasts only. The game is very slow paced and maniacal at points where you really have to be paying attention and take your time in order to master it and get the most out of it. If you're not going to have the patience for the game, it's not going to be worth checking out. If you're expecting something more arcadey like a Cabela's African Adventure, you're not going to find that here with The Hunter Call of the Wild. With everything said though, I'm going to be giving the game a 7 out of 10. But anyway guys, it's going to wrap up this review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.